show at Foss Talk Live. I'm Joe. I'm Alan. And I'm Dan. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I've done this. We are. Well. I had to put my uh, guitar <laughs> back up there. So, yeah, this is weird. We normally uh, never do this as video, and uh, this show hangs on its edit, and there's not going to be any editing. So, uh, I'm also quite drunk at this point. So, who knows what's going to happen? We're going to answer some random questions as usual. I don't think we've even got a Linux one. So it's going to be some light relief. So we're going to try and crowbar uh, Linux into one of the questions or not? Ah, uh, we can always try. We can always try. It's got to be one of the answers to one of these questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. The first question then. What's the silliest thing a significant other has ever called you? I think probably the silliest one is Bunny. <laughs> bunny. And, and it was actually someone at uh, UDS that started that. <laughs> Bunny as in bunny foo-foo or something else? Yeah, like a bunny rabbit, like oh. a bunny rabbit, because of my nick, right? And so it was um, Jason oh, yeah. Smith uh, started calling me that as a joke at UDS, and then my girlfriend at the time picked it up. Right. Hmm. Now, I've been thinking about this, and I can't think of anything. Like, Joey is like the stupidest thing. That I've is ever jo- the Joey reference from the 1980s? No. Okay. Just Joey as in Joe with a Y on the end. I don't okay. know. I think it started from the cats. I think that to, to make me uh, sound nicer when describing me to the foster cats that are scared, it's like, oh, don't worry, it's only Joey. And so there you go. That's the dumbest Aww. thing. Uh, uh, we've got I one have at the one... moment who's actually really scared and hiding whenever I go anywhere near him, but he's relaxed when I... It's just quite, you are quite imposing, though. Yeah. Although the, the previous one we had was scared of my wife and loved me. What's all that about? Anyway, what about you, Ellen? What's the, the silliest thing a significant other's called you? So uh, when I first started dating Claire, uh, uh, we had a philosophical discussion uh, late at night. It's like in... Uh, new show, but just with a pair of us. Uh, and we had a discussion about um, language and the use of, because uh, it was early in the relationship, the L word, love. And uh, we talked about how it means different things to different people. And we said, wouldn't it be good if we just picked a different word rather than use that one? How about we use a different word? And we did. And we both chose a different word. And we still use it now instead of the L word or in addition to the L word. And so I say, I cheeseburger you. And she says, I curtain rail you. And that's what gets written in uh, cards when we write to each other. She curtain rails you. Yeah. I think it might have been the very first thing she saw when she looked up because we were in bed at the time. And <laughs> I bet you were curtain rail, getting curtain rail. Uh, uh, I curtain rail you. Wow. Uh, yeah. I didn't John, know you were that adventurous, John, Alan. <laughs> John in the well, chat says, what else? It doesn't mean Linux. I Linux you. That sounds a bit better. <laughs> there we go. We'll probably write it in. We did it. Well done. Much like the curtain rail. Yay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. That's probably all we've got to say on that. Normally, I'd cut all this bit out. And as I say, the show comes together in the edit. But now you're seeing behind the scenes. Or we'd put it at the beginning. That's what you'd get at the beginning of the show is just Alan gets curtain railed and you'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then bring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, right. What's the oldest piece of technology, excluding white goods, cars, computers, and guitars, that you still use on a regular basis? Joe, what are white goods? Is this like There's juice one right and behind voting? You. Like what? <laughs> There's a no, white the thing... good in your camera yeah. frame. <laughs> yeah. Things that are literally white? White goods are like fridges, dishwasher, washing machine, shit like that. Okay, I don't think we use that term here. What do you call them? Very Domestic charged. appliances? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, right. So uh, we, we had previously discussed this, uh, but only in Telegram. And we sort of came to the conclusion that um, probably like plumbing, like the, the building I live in is over 100 years old. And the pipes that go under it are technically technology. And therefore, they are that's technology that I use every morning, usually. And um, I'm, I'm using that technology every day, and it's 
really old, over 100 years. So the, the pipes under my flat. Are, are we going by date manufactured or like date invented? Mm. I mean, you probably know, win well, either way with indoor yeah, plumbing, said, but well, yeah, like the Romans. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, so I, hmm. I didn't know which one of those you meant. So I kind of like thought about a few different things and I guess it depends on what you mean by technology, but I think the earliest invented technology besides obviously indoor plumbing, because I didn't think of that one is uh, candles Mm. like candles right like yeah. modern candles is like 1850s like they're not made out of like whale blubber anymore or anything um, yeah, but candles and then, a concept have been around for thousands of years haven't they? well yeah they? but like modern candles like manufactured in a industrial manner with modern wax right mm. i was trying to do my best to not totally cheat um, but the other thing that I own that it's also an old object and was invented uh, quite a while ago that I'd use regularly is a safety razor. And the particular safety razor that I use uh, actually belonged to my great grandfather. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you use any of your ThinkPads regularly, Poppy, or do they not? Well, no, because you said not computers. So I can't. Yeah. So oh, I yeah. I, mis I interpreted this thing differently. I thought I didn't realize this was um, things that exist near you that you're using by virtue of living in a house. I think that's a bit <laughs> arbitrary, right? <laughs> right? Which is what plumbing is. I went for things which I have acquired in life somehow, physical items that I've acquired in life and continue to use. And so that, is that lava lamp behind me which uh i wondered why that was behind you the whole time it's been there it's been there for years actually oh, i right. just never turn it on but i turned it on today because i thought of this question and um that was given to me the very first christmas that me and claire were together sorry to bring it up again but um first christmas that was the christmas present that she gave me and uh uh, I opened it on Christmas Day, and I was like, "Oh, holy shit! She she thinks more about this relationship than I do." <laughs> I didn't buy her anything anywhere near as good as that. I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, but that was in 1997 that I got that, and the lava lamp was invented in 1963. So, if you're if you're wanting to, you know, go back to when things were invented, then yeah, that's that's probably the oldest thing that I have acquired over time and not thing that was buried in the ground by somebody else hundreds of years ago that I happen to be using by virtue of buying a house, which seems really stupid, but okay. Yeah, Joe, I think you got to pick something like more explicit. I mean, I've got a 70s lamp that I, uh, well, it was for sale, but it was really dangerous. And I said, you can't sell this. Is that like a village fate thing? And <laughs> I'll I take it off your hands. <laughs> Yeah, well, I said, like, you can't sell this. Like, this is dangerous. And they're like, oh, right, do you want it then? I was like, all right. And so I rewired it. And uh, <laughs> and now it's our cool lamp. And it's like, the it's really sort of kitsch 70s wooden two, like, stags or some sort of deer or something. And uh, it's really nice. I like it. So is it a fire probably, hazard? Well, no, because I, I made sure it was uh, nice and wired properly. It was, a, it was just a death trap before. But, uh, you know, it's if you know anything about you know, technology and wiring of stuff. It's really not rocket science. I just got a new cable and a new uh, light bulb holder and put it all together and it's been working ever since. So probably that is a bit boring, but uh, yes, uh, I'll have to dig out a picture of it. <laughs> that actually still has the same uh, lava uh, or whatever it is, wax and liquid inside. A lot of them you have to get them redone, but this still has the same stuff. So Genuine Unlike Joe's lamp of Theseus. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, don't change the light bulb in that for an LED, otherwise it won't work, because it doesn't get hot enough. Indeed. I have learned this. Yes. Has <laughs> <laughs> to go on the black market and get dodgy incandescent bulbs, mate, <laughs> in order to uh, use it. Yeah, as John says in the chat, Technology Connections uh, on YouTube has a good video about lava lamps, and he makes one, and it takes him ages and he has to... Uh, get the, the the chemicals in there right and everything it's actually harder than it looks i recommend getting a female friend to buy you one instead it's much quicker and easier <laughs> <laughs> it does mean an investment of 20 years of marriage though 
<laughs> with all its ups and downs. Eh? Yes. Is that the exchange rate for lava lamps it these is. days? It's totally is. They're quite expensive. Right, there'd be a musical bumper there normally. So, uh... Yeah, are you not going to play it? I thought you were going to play all the little musical. Uh, I have to reach over here. And not... Yeah, come on. Do it for the show. Uh, uh, and try and... Okay, so it'd be something like... Yeah, we're well, nice. going to ask the question, question, which is, how many of the people you have a parasocial relationship with do you think you'd really want to be friends with? Joe, what is a parasocial relationship? <laughs> Glad you are. <laughs> okay, so a parasocial relationship is uh, like the relationship you have with us, dear listener. So, uh, well, except for all the people who actually know us. But if you don't really know us, or, you know, it could be any podcast, could be any YouTube channel, any sort of, you know, person in the public eye or whatever. I think it's more so with podcasts and YouTube channels because you really start to feel like you know that person and they almost start to feel like they're your friend. Um, and But then obviously it's a completely one-sided friendship. Like, you know, I meet people at conferences who, uh, you know, somewhat feel like they know me and I've had it the other way around. I mean, I had it with you, Popey. Like, I listened to the Ubuntu podcast for years and then met you and now we're friends and that like... Was <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. that. <laughs> yeah. but you know i've had that with like basically everyone in linux podcasting who i've become friends with chris and stuff i mean that was weird like the first podcast i ever listened to not even linux podcast was the uh, linux action show and now i'm like friends with chris which is weird um so with that in mind then like do you have any parasocial relationships first of all with people so let me get this straight. A parasocial relationship is one is a one sided one where, for example, I'm consuming the content and I, I feel invested in their life, but they don't yeah. know who the hell I am. I'm a number on their subscriber chart, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so there's a guy who runs a YouTube channel, uh, and he's similar kind of age to me, and he uh, owns a canal boat. And he cruises up and down the canal and makes little videos and he cracked dad jokes. And I feel he's he's a pretty chill kind of guy, gets a little bit upset now and then at things that I know I would get irrationally upset about. So I feel I have a connection to this person despite and I you know, I've interacted with him on Twitter and yeah, we've we've had brief like back and forth conversations and stuff, but and no more than that. And I think that probably qualifies. Uh, but I think if I if I were to actually answer your question, I would sound like a stalker. I would sound like a weirdo <laughs> who wants to go and meet this man <laughs> by a canal. <laughs> canal boat. <laughs> yeah, by a canal. And I want to go and take him a present or something. Or yeah, <laughs> take him to the pub. Or something. I, I sound weird just saying it out loud. And I wish I hadn't. But oh, well. I love um, that. It's great. Yeah. I think that's who it would be. Yeah. I can just imagine you on like a little centrist dad date in a canal. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about painting our canal boats and, but I, I in Drinking the same way that like beers. you look at like a Linux podcaster or, you know, someone, someone in tech who's like well known and you see them and you think, Oh, you know, uh, it's a bit of an aspirational thing there. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to have all that tech and I'd like to have that nice lifestyle and the Tesla and all that kind of stuff with this guy. I'd just like to have a boat a bit on my own and not have anyone else around me. <laughs> I kind of aspire to that. I think. What about you, Dan? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I think like the majority of the people that I, I follow on social media, I have met or know in some way. And there's like, there's obviously some content creators or whatever that um, I, ha I haven't met that I follow, but I don't know that I'm like super invested in their lives in any way, really. It's just like, oh, you know, they put out a new video or whatever. That was cool. You know, great job. Um, trying to think of like, who, who do I follow that I've never met that I would legitimately be like, oh, they're probably a cool person or I want to hang out with them. Like, I feel like that list is so small. Like so many of the people that I think are interesting people, I would hate hanging out with them. I think that would be just the fucking worst. <laughs> just Why? I, and like, uh, you know, any, any band 
that I follow any of their stuff or anybody that's in comedy or anything like that. I'm like, oh, you'd be such a fucking pain in the ass to hang out with. I am way too low energy for that. Like, I'm not going to party. You know, we're not going to go back to your whatever the fuck and do coke off of somebody. You know, like, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm too boring and, and I guess, like, old now. But um, I think I'd get, like, a beer with, like, AOC and talk about socialism. But that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have thought about politicians actually, and thinking about you know sitting with a politician. But I think uh, because my my political brain is too simplistic, and you know being centrist dad and all that, I don't think I, I think I would just sit there and listen. I don't think I would be able to engage in a conversation with them. And so I might as well just watch them on a YouTube channel rather than <laughs> rather than be in the same room. You know, if they're going to buy me a pint <laughs> and talk at me about politics, fair enough. If they're going to, if it's a musician and they're going to buy me a drink and then play music for me, brilliant. But I don't, I, I, I feel I wouldn't want to engage with these, with those people, despite actually really wanting to, but I, I don't feel intellectually capable of doing it. I mean, well, that's the thing me, too, though, is like, if you actually hang out with this person and then like want to have a conversation with them about the thing they do for their job, they probably don't want to do that at all. <laughs> like I know for me, like if people like try to talk to me about Linux stuff when I'm not doing my job, I'm like, dude, no, I just, can we talk about anything else? <laughs> oh, that's weird. When people ask me about um, podcasting and editing, I love talking about that shit, man. I think it means you don't truly love your job, guys. The fact that you're... Uh, I think it's no. that you don't you. talk to any other human beings, Joe. <laughs> as soon as oh, someone yeah. asks you about it, you're like, I must tell them, I must tell them. <laughs> yeah. This is the right microphone to buy. Don't buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> don't buy a condenser. <laughs> buy dynamic. Um, but as for parasocial relationships, like I have the, the weirdest one I have, right, is with uh, this couple who sail around the South Pacific and uh, vlog about it, essentially, on YouTube. And I got into it just by accident because um, for for a while, I ended up basically sort of sharing a YouTube channel with uh, Chris from JB because he was, uh, I was like a manager on that. And just for some reason, his recommendations came to me. And so he got a load of guitar videos recommended to him. And I got a load of like people who are into RVing and stuff. And these people used to do RVing and then they started sailing. And um, like... Uh, it's it's a really good escape to watch them sailing around the south pacific and they've been in you know having to deal with covid and everything and you know i feel like i've really got to know them through these videos but at the same time like i just don't think i'd want to hang out with them because they're just too adventurous and too outdoorsy and too like you know the kind of people who would sail from america to the fucking south pacific like no i want to watch that on a youtube video from the comfort of my own flat <laughs> and then you know <laughs> shit in my own toilet not in a bucket on a boat somewhere i have started feeling a lot more emotionally invested in some of the people that i see on tiktok more than youtube because uh -oh. i find it the the people are a lot it's a lot more raw a lot less heavily edited because you have to pander to the algorithm on youtube and yes you have to on tiktok it's a yeah. different algorithm and it panders to different things whereas the the youtube algorithm is very much looking for particular types of content and omitting other types of content whereas tiktok is pretty it's pretty broad but it's a lot more personal and so i feel emotionally invested with um there's this uh, this woman who has uh, something called essential tremor, so she's like shaking all the time, and I'm invested in her life and how she copes with like eating and looking after herself. And I, and there's <laughs> there's a woman on there who is able to belch for about 15 seconds flat, <laughs> like, and I'm emotionally every time she posts, I I have to watch the videos like over and over again, and I just am invested in these random people on the internet. I don't. It's is my own life so boring that I'm interested in some woman who can belch for a very long time? Yes, probably. That's probably all. What about that lady who beats the shit out of the um, like? What, what do you call it? It's like a, a torso, a rubber torso that you like do boxing training on or whatever, and she just beats the shit out of him. Have you not That's seen not my that bag, one? mate. But okay, whatever yeah. floats your boat. <laughs> you get all these people on a big boat party, <laughs> big boat dinner party in the South Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, on the South Pacific. <laughs> cool. Right, uh, I can't be asked to get the guitar, but just imagine some sort of bumping there. <laughs> 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 there you go. 
Uh, right. Uh, and we, we, we've got through these questions a bit quicker than I thought we would. So uh, feel free to ask us any questions in the uh, YouTube chat and uh, we might consider them. And uh, try, tag me or something so it lights up. Uh, so what's the next one then? Uh, what's, uh, what country has the best food? Now well, we have to pretend that we haven't spoken about this America. in the last episode. Surely this is limited to what countries have we been to and uh, experienced the food from, rather than my opinion of Thai food looks quite nice. Never been to Thailand. Food looks quite nice, though. <laughs> like, where, what are you aiming for with this question? I think that counts. Like, if it's genuine Thai people who are cooking it here, they might have changed it slightly for our market but it is still the thai food that i can get a mile down the road that way is still thai food it might not be the same as in thailand but it is still thai food so okay so it's not you're not saying which country if you uh, if you have been there or go there you're saying the origin like our expected origin of the food so a thai curry here roughly thai thailand yeah. right yeah exactly mm. oh so you're saying cuisine not location yeah let's say that yeah. mm, now clearly the answer point. is britain with a, a delicious uh roast potatoes and uh bland roast bit of meat with no seasoning that's uh clearly conquer the world for spices doesn't use any of them in their cooking exactly yeah no no the answer is uh, france really french french cuisine is the best italian people like to think that theirs is the best but french is the best and I say this as someone who has been to a motorway services. What do you call a motorway services? A rest stop, I guess. Um, and, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Can I just rewind? You're talking about the best possible French cuisine. Yeah. And you punctuate that with, I've been to a motorway service station. Yeah. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. I've been to a motorway service station in France and eaten the food, and it was delicious. Now, that is the shittest food you're going to find in France, and it was delicious. <laughs> and so, therefore, properly nice French food is going to be just amazing. So I have experienced properly nice French food in France, in French France, in Cannes. Uh, and you're right. The food is amazing. Uh, I I had... I uh, was on the, on holiday many years ago, and we didn't have a bad meal in any restaurant. And a lot of them were like plastic chairs outside, plastic table, you know. But it's it's a you know it's a popular, relatively expensive place to go um, on the south of France, south coast of France, and the restaurants were great. The food wasn't super expensive, but the food was just. We didn't have a bad meal the whole time we were there. We went to one yeah. restaurant twice, and the waitress recognized us and said, uh, oh, you've you've come back. And I was like, I was surprised at her surprise. And she said, uh, I said, why why are you surprised? And she was like, well, you you got so much choice here, and you decided to come back here again. And I was like, well, you know, we had a good time. So we got some free cocktails from her, uh, which was quite nice for coming back. Maybe I tipped too heavily the first time we were there. Maybe that's all it was. <laughs> was drunk. Yeah, I mean, I have had decent food in France as well, and it was amazing in little family-run restaurants and stuff. And, yeah, I never had a bad meal while I was there. Like, even a salad. Somehow they make a, a salad just delicious. Hmm. What about you, Dan? So uh, a lot of people in the chat are asking if I had had curry, and I did have a, an excellent curry in London. That is true. That is a thing that London has is great curry. And um, I did go to a nice Japanese place in uh, London once as well. Um, I find most traditional European food to be pretty bland and not very good. Um, I know it's horrible to say, but I think the shitty American versions are usually tastier. And they make you way fatter. <laughs> yeah, more sugar, um, more fat, more MSG. Of course they're going to be nice. Yeah, though. hell yeah, MSG. Um, so I think like if I had to only pick one cuisine, which is really hard, it would have to be in between like Americanized Italian food and Mexican food. Those are, those would be the ones that I have to pick. Cause I feel like there's enough variety there and I fucking love tomatoes mashed up for some <laughs> reason. It's just my jam. And, uh, 
you know, I don't know. Well, which, uh, uh, those are hard to choose between. <laughs> we, we've had a question that is relatively similar in the past, and that was like, if you could only have one meal or one food forever. And I think you and me, Dan, both picked pizza because that is clearly the best because you can do it's you can yeah. do anything with it so i suppose Pizza's by the that optimal logic. food dude it's bread with tomatoes mashed up cheese and meat yeah. and maybe veggies well, or fruits or whatever else you want too you're basic That's... <laughs> <laughs> pizza is an open sandwich Sandwiches yeah. have existed for years in every culture. Some kind of bread. It's boring. There's way better things to have than pizza. And uh, pizza. every culture around the world has something better than pizza in their repertoire. Pizza is like a swimming pool. Even even a shit swimming pool is better than no swimming pool. And even <laughs> shit pizza is better than no pizza. Like, I had fucking airport pizza in Seattle, and it was better than no pizza. It wasn't the best pizza I've ever had, but it was still better than no pizza. I have That's to say, real. one of the nice meals I had in Cannes was a nice pizza. Um, but it was a French pizza. You and Alice <laughs> is pretty good. Lasagna. It's like yeah. soft pizza. It's great. <laughs> okay, I think we've done that to death. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, jump around a little bit. So Rachel in the chat says... Uh, how long ago did you each install your current main OS and what's your normal lifetime for a Linux installation? Poppy, what's the command to find that out? Pseudo cat, uh, well, if it's Debian based, um, var log installer Casper, I suppose. Casper.log, maybe. Oh, no, it'd be media dot something. Hang on. Sorry about the <laughs> clicking. Yeah, okay. So if you do a. And if you ls var log installer directory, you'll see a date on it. Okay, so I don't need to sudo that then. Uh, August the 15th, 2020, by the look of it here. The date what on the media info. The file, the file tells you what you installed from. So for me, it was 2004.1 oh. LTS. And August the 15th, 2020. And that's because that's when I got this machine. I think uh, maybe not actually. Did I reinstall? Oh, 20 I'm like 18 07 25. So 25th okay. of July 2018. Oh, that's mm. longer than I thought it would be. Oh, hang on. I'll let you down. Uh, I'm in the middle of like a dev cycle right now. So I reinstalled uh, on both of my usual machines, the desktop and the laptop, within the last two weeks for sure. And I feel like the longest I keep an install around is like six months, you know, maybe. Is that just because you knew can pave and test the new installs and stuff? Yeah. And especially like um, going through the first run experience repeatedly, I think is important for making sure that it's not annoying. And yeah. So I'm just dog fooding the installer and onboarding pretty regularly. Hmm. So if mine says uh, 1804.1... Uh, In the media mean... info file. Yes. So that's yeah. what I installed from and then upgraded to 2004 now. Yep. Right. I, I didn't realize. I thought I'd done a clean install, but apparently not. So, yeah, for me, I generally just do a fresh install of the LTS, usually six or eight months after it comes out, when something annoys me. You know, something is too old to work for connecting to Mumble or something. Mm -hmm. But if I could just never upgrade, I would never upgrade. So that my newest machine is on the desk behind me, and it's the a company laptop that arrived like the Friday before I started work, and uh, it arrived with Windows 10 on it, and I zapped it and put uh, Ubuntu on it, Kubuntu actually. And it's been sat on that desk on ever since I started. So that's like four three four weeks ago i started um and i haven't actually turned it off since so it's got like 20 20 days uptime um just from that one install um so yeah that's my well, most uptime recent. is a, another thing mine is uh, uh two and a half hours <laughs> since i last rebooted because my machine is either on or off like i don't get this like surely you have to reboot it every three weeks when you get a new kernel I, no i, don't, I just no. don't bother Mine's been up 33 days, this machine. And that's only because it died. 
I presume your yeah, uptime is my, much lower. Damn. My desktop's probably been up for like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's about it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I think I do too much like experimental stuff too. I'll completely hose my install in one way or another and be like, nah, all right, it's faster to just reinstall than figure out what I broke. Yeah. Uh, Phelim in the chat is, is very happy that you're using KDE. Yeah, I've got KDE on everything now. Uh, all my machines are running Kubuntu KDE. Um, and I'm happy. I like Why? how the chat is still talking about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, pizza, man, I'm telling you, once you uh, get pizza in your head, it's you just have to have one. And like everyone, I think I feel in... vindicated from anyone saying, like, oh, your barbaric American tastes are not good enough. It's like, <laughs> I don't even know what accent that was, but generic Europe. Everybody's yeah. still talking about pizza, okay? So, yeah, well, it's... once that seed's planted, that's it. Like, we're all going to have a pizza. It might, it might take us a week, it might take us a month, but we are going to have a pizza. Surely, about this. pizza is, as I said, it is the lowest common denominator food. It's, it's just cheese on toast. Yeah, but cheese on toast is rank compared to proper pizza. Even shit. Yeah, you pizza. gotta have mashed up tomatoes, dude. I did actually. You what? <laughs> when I was very lazy, uh, I used to buy uh, pita breads and get uh and just make like pizza out of them i just like make a tomato and garlic and stuff sauce and herbs <laughs> that and doesn't sound lazy them. enough more lazy would be to buy a pizza yeah true yeah, they got frozen pizzas, pizzas for like salty. 99 cents man right <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they're just gross and i don't know i mean it's better than no pizza but i'd rather make one out of pita breads somehow Anyway, we were supposed to be talking about linux have you ever sorry yeah i'm back on pizza have you ever made your own pizza <laughs> dough before uh, I fun, fun funny story. My wife makes a great pizza dough, and she can make a pizza from scratch, right? And I've seen her do it loads of times. And one time she was away, and I was like, "Right, I'm going to do this. I've watched her do it. It's not rocket science. I can do it." And I I made the dough, and I started rolling it out, and then it just started sticking to the everything, and it was just. Th and then in the end, I got so mad, I literally screwed it all up with the, the grease proof paper and just fucking threw it in the bin. I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm going to get fried chicken instead." I've used the uh, bread maker to make uh, pizza dough before. That's like super easy. You just put it in a machine and press a button. I've come back and you've got a ball yeah. of dough. It's great. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably get back on track now. Uh, yeah, sorry. What's the longest uptime for your pizza that you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. What's the one bit of advice you could give someone that's certain to be right for any given situation? Should we save the best for last and let Alan be the old wise man at the end? <laughs> Do we go in yeah, order okay. of age? Do yeah, like okay. shittiest advice first? Yeah, go on. You're a bit younger than All me, right. Dan, so you go. All right. Uh, I was trying to think about what this one was, and I was like, oh, no, that doesn't apply. But the best thing I could come up with was figure out what your goal is, where you're at right now, and the smallest possible steps you could take to get there, and then just take one step at a time. Right. So any given situation. So like, say you're listening to three guys talk on YouTube. That's pretty good advice, right? But what if you are puking into puking your guts up into a toilet, like having drunk way too much booze? Is that really? Well, is that? Yeah. My goal is I don't want to puke anymore. My where I'm at right now is I'm puking. And the smallest possible steps I can take to get there is probably to like drink some water or consume some bread. And then you do one of those things at a time until you, you know, stop puking. Right. Well, Very that ties wise. into my advice, funnily enough. And my advice is have a <laughs> sip of water. <laughs> no matter what you're doing, you, you could be you could be doing this. Right. Say, say this cider is water. Like, oh, shit. Right. I'm really failing here. Let me just take it. It's, let me take some time to think. Now I've come Your up with advice is much more excellent. concise. Yeah. Just there, there is no situation. And same with if you're drunk as fuck. Not drink loads of water, just a sip of water. And it that will that is always good advice. What if you're um if you've consumed too much water? <laughs> That's pretty uh, Yeah, what then, and Joe? And your kidney is failing because you've checkmate over, atheist. It. 
Uh, well, that, okay then. That's all we can say to that. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously I'm wrong then. What's your advice, Granddad? Uh, my advice, <laughs> my advice after many years, uh, would be uh, write a list. Whatever it is, write a list. It actually uh, feeds off of what Dan said, really, is break things down yes. into small steps. But writing a list gets you to think about them more. And when you start articulating them by handwriting, and I don't I don't mean typing it into a spreadsheet. I actually mean handwriting it on a piece of paper. There's something about that process of you writing a list that the list grows and you find there are more things you want to make a note of and more ideas come to you because you're in that zone of writing things down. Uh, and then start taking on the advice that Dan gives, break those things down into smaller parts to get you to your goal. But yeah, make a list. Whenever you're panicking and overwhelmed by lots of things going on, stop, sit down, get a piece of paper, make a list. And have a sip of water while you're at it. Or whiskey. Or pizza. <laughs> what whiskey pizza. have you got there, Dan? This is Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is... Um, Pinhook. And it's Bohemian two, bourbon. Two thirty in the afternoon for you? Uh it is whiskey thirty. It is two thirty on a Saturday, so I think the time rules do not apply on Saturdays. <laughs> if you can drink mimosas at nine AM on a Sunday, you can drink whiskey at two thirty on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. True. I would uh, love to hear the advice from uh the chat to see if anyone has better advice than uh plan oh, your man. goals see have a drink of water or make a list doing video shows and people are like ah oh, your your taste in food is trash your whiskey glass sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah getting roasted I'm changing, in chat over here i'm changing my advice don't do it live on youtube <laughs> no matter yeah. what it is you're doing <laughs> Whatever your goals are, don't do them live. Right. Yeah. Nobody's commented a bit about me being in my kitchen yet. So, what's written on your blackboard? That's what I want to know. Uh, those are my mantras and affirmations, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Go on, read about to us. No. Oh, you want me to read all of them? You want me to go no, through? Read one. Pick one at random. Okay. Well, the one I've had up on the board the longest is it's only when we believe thoughts that they gain power over us. Whoa. Deep. That's yeah. well deep, man. Yeah. All right, next we question. It's out here, but we, we can't. <laughs> so, yeah, next question. Uh, well, we've run out of questions. Thankfully, I've got backup questions. So let's, let's do a computer-based one. Sort by name, size, or date modified. Also, oh. thumbnails or list. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, get, I'll dive in for this one. Uh, it depends, obviously. Ooh. Yeah, come because on. Because it depends what, you, what, you're, what you're looking for. Like, if I'm looking for my folder called sync, uh, then I know it's halfway down the page and I'm either going to scroll down alphabetically. If I'm some kind of lunatic and I have them in date order, then I'm going to start scrolling and I have to read every single line to try and find the folder called sync. No, you don't. Open it. Well, I haven't finished my sentence. I either have to scroll down the list or I have to start typing it and search for it. If, yeah. if I have them sorted by name and I'm looking for the ones sync, and I'm already halfway down the page. I don't need to start typing because I'm already there. I can already see it. So it depends. If I'm looking in my photos folder that where I find uh, lots of screenshots, for example, I probably want my most recently taken screenshot that I just took that I want to put in a document or I want to paste to someone. So I would probably sort by date. So, no. Nah. What about uh, list or thumbnails? Uh, list. With tiny thumbnails, just to give me enough that I can, I know that that's definitely the thing because the background color is the right color. I don't want yeah. big fat like things that look like a PDF that take up half the screen. I don't want that. I just want little tiny icons because I want to get as much on screen as possible. What about you, Dan? Um, 
most of the time alphabetical, but I agree with Alan that there are certain situations like downloads I want sorted by date and time. Um, yeah. Screenshots, I guess, is screenshots are technically sorted uh, by date and time and alphabetically, I think. Yeah, but do they have screenshots the in named. front? Is it a screenshot by IMMDD or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that means the date is halfway across the file name, which makes them shit. Because especially if the folder isn't just screenshots, you know, it's. Oh, well, why would uh, you have more than just screenshots? Where because you're you stupid just desktop all your photos together. Right? Yeah, because oh it's stupid God. desktop environment defaults to putting them in the pictures folder, and also <sighs> defaults to having colons in the file name. What idiot decided <sighs> that? I do not know. Yeah, because oh, you can't no. even put that on a Windows file system, can you? On an NTFS. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Stupid. Uh, Rachel's asking, what file manager do we all use? I think that's pretty obvious. You must be using... Uh, uh, well, I'm using Thuna. Yours is... I can't remember what it's called now on KDE. Uh, Dolphin. Uh, Dolphin. Yeah. What about you, Dan? Yeah, what, what's it called? Elementary files, elementary? obviously. Elementary files. And yeah. obviously, Mark the, uh, is saying... Car, for yeah, the, the car view type, type, though... I didn't answer the view one. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, not just icons or lists, but we also have a column view. And oh, I like the Mac. I, oh, I yeah. want to switch over to using the column view because I feel like it's probably objectively the smartest view to use. But I just, for some reason, just use the icon view because I'm a simpleton. Yeah. I well, the good thing in Thuna is buttons. you can hold control and scroll if you're on list view. Let me just double check this. Yeah, and you can make the thumbnails bigger temporarily if you want to uh, see yeah, things. You don't have to have on thumbnails. Yeah. Whereas it infuriates me. My missus, I open up her laptop and she just has it on thumbnails. And it's like, how the fuck are you going to find anything? But I suppose she's quite a visual person <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> okay. Okay then. Uh, like, right, I so. feel like the the fatal flaw with the icon view is that if you're primarily working with images, certainly it's smarter to be using whatever your image managing application is, right? Like, if you if you're really looking for images, shouldn't you be using a completely different application that's designed for like the categorization and organization of images? I was really surprised no. when we started this question. I was really surprised that you actually fessed up to using a file manager. I thought you were going to go on some rant about semantic <laughs> files and how nobody should use file managers. You should open the application that you want to use, and then it should have the, the data arranged that's most appropriate for that application based on the context and the last activity you did. I'm surprised you ducked out of that one. Well, I mean, for the most part, yeah. But some <laughs> in some cases, though, like... If you're using an open file tile log, are you technically using part of the file manager, right? Uh, it's funny, Wes but, says... And then uh, there's like developer, manager. there's developer cases where, it, it, I mean, we do have file management in code, but it's it's not very complex. So I think there are some like file management cases that are different from like, if you're using a music player, it should just do the thing with your music. You shouldn't be like manually moving around music files like a crazy person. Nah, drag and drop. Uh, so you saw me try and cut in there, and Dan, uh, there was too much lag. So that would normally get cut. So there's a uh, peer behind the curtain for you. I but, yeah. think the fact that you keep mentioning the curtain and cutting is worse than you just jumping over it and ignoring it. Yeah, Joe, I, why I just, so insecure? I don't know. I just Jeez. I don't like being live. I just I don't like it. And this is going to be preserved forever, and I can't fix it. <laughs> That's why I never do anything live because you can't fix it after the fact. Like you say something stupid, or make a dumb joke that doesn't land, you can cut it out if it's not live. <laughs> anyway, uh, real life. I, wish I could do that in real life. If I yeah, was just down at the pub and I made a bad joke, I was like, oh yeah. shit, I'll edit that out. Later. Now we're talking over each other, which makes it worse. Yeah, real life <laughs> is like that. If you never leave your flat and just only communicate with the world via podcasts. So there you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I'm getting heckled in the chat now. Uh, what else have we got then? All oh, right, this is a great one. Um, describe in detail your most vivid dream. 
No, not really. Um, what's your that's Alan's realist- nightmare question? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had this nightmare the other day. Let me tell you all about it. It was you guys <laughs> yeah. telling me your dreams. <laughs> no, right. No, it is related to that. What's your realistic dream that you know deep down will never come true? So I'm thinking, you know, I'm not talking ridiculous stuff like I'm going to fly to the moon or I'm going to be a billionaire or I'm going to be a rock star. I'm thinking more realistic, like. I personally, I would love to have an epic train set and I could totally do that. I could make that happen, but it's never going to happen because I just, uh, it's just not going to happen. So a realistic dream that, you know, will never actually happen. Uh, home ownership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right in the feels. Yep. Hmm. Um, so this is this has got to be like not a dream. This has to just be like a modest goal that you're just too lazy to achieve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd like. I'd really like to rearrange my desk, but you know, it's, no, it's <laughs> never I'd happen. like to tidy my desk, but it's just it's not happening. <laughs> uh, I moved a couple of VHS. Uh, what's it called? VHS C tapes that were kicking around. What's written on this? I uh, probably shouldn't show, but I had some of these that I was digitizing, and they just sat on my desk for two months. The hell is that? Then, I mean, hang on. It, like, so, but when you were a kid, Dan, we had VHS. So if you want to watch, I'm a kidding. Video, I know what that is. <laughs> well, but you know what? This was like went in camcorders and stuff. You know? Yeah, I mean, th- this does sum us up. Like the fact that you could reach out and grab um, a. Uh, I mean, the fact that you could do that, and I can reach out and very conveniently grab a zip disk. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I feel like I have to so, that now. But uh, can you do this? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, we're doing one up now, are we? Okay. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got unopened DV tapes. If that's any good to anyone. Shit. Wow. What other old stuff do I have nearby? <laughs> I, I haven't got them nearby, but I've got some mini discs that are sealed. I think I have some paper mail. <laughs> <laughs> from the government um okay. so i have one of these and i it, it seems reasonable and it, i know it's reasonable because i know people who do it and have done it and these people are not billionaires and that is uh visit australia and new zealand and they just i don't know they just seem like another world away and i, I know it's like a few grand on a plane and it's 24 hour flight or whatever and it's just and another country. Quarantine. And, well, some quarantine. Yeah, okay, forget forget the Rona. But under normal circumstances, a few grand and jump on a plane. And I could go to somewhere very far away, still do my job effectively, not look after the kids very well. Um, but, you know, it is possible. But I, I can't see myself ever going to Australia or New Zealand. But, yeah. It's perfectly attainable, but for some reason, I, I don't think I will. It's it's not on my goals. Maybe I need to follow your advice, Dan, and make it one of my goals <laughs> and write down the small steps as a list, have a little sip of water, and then maybe I'll get there. <laughs> right. That's it. That's where the music would fade up normally because that was a good stopping point. Again. Oh, no, I don't even get to answer. We're just, Alan's was so good. That you're... Yeah, fuck you, Dan. You've no, go on, Dan. You've got home ownership. <laughs> I only had joke answers. I didn't even real uh, answer. Uh, uh, all right, go on. Gives you a real answer. Go on. Okay, my good. real answer. Uh, I I want to do a restaurant. That's my that's my dream slash goal that I could probably be reasonable do that uh, reasonably do. Edit that later, Joe, and post. And <laughs> um, hold on, I'm going to start that over, and Joe will edit it. The goal that I would like to reasonably do <laughs> is to open a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> would it by any chance be a pizza be, restaurant uh, a pizza restaurant uh i'm sure you could like, uh no uh, no it'd be uh, franchise, surely <laughs> yeah, no. uh, the, what i want to do is like tapa style where everything is is like small bites and but have it all be like american food and like pub food served on bread yeah in an oven. tons of bread <laughs> yeah fucking bread Fat, butter, bacon, beans, bacon, whiskey, lard. 
yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that I I could probably like save up. I could probably get a loan. I could probably you know I know people in the restaurant industry. I worked in restaurants for years. I could write the recipes. I could do graphic design and marketing. Like I could do all those things if I really wanted to do, but I just don't have the energy. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Maybe you need to add some more things to that little blackboard behind you. Yeah. yeah. Get off your ass. Well, that's leaving it on high, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see, now, th now this, I would have fucking cut well, that. What out. was yours, Joe? I told oh, you. Yeah. Train set. It is. A train oh, set. yeah. The train set. Yeah. Uh, I want an epic that was a train set. Too. With, no, that's serious. Like with all, like, you know, the little models painted and, like, you know, scenery and everything and, you know, proper tracks that you can, uh, change direction and all that kind of stuff i fucking love to have that just like a giant room full of it but i could do you know i could probably do like a small version of that in my flat if i just threw away some shit but i'm just like even if i ever manage to fucking move into a house i'm not going to do that because i'd rather use the space for just storing old shit probably or well know, setting up a drum kit i say let's all move to new zealand and we can open a train theme restaurant. Yeah, let's do it.